by the time this goes out, it would have been the one-year celebration of Culture Coffee. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at such a pivotal time in the world, in America, in Oklahoma, I mean, it couldn't have been a better time to launch that for you guys, right? Yeah. Um, Tell me about all that stuff, because there's so much stuff that's gone on and so much stuff in that, I mean, as mm -hmm. well as the coffee being amazing and all the specialty ones that you do, which, I mean, that's a whole <laughs> different conversation we could definitely <laughs> dive into. But, um, you know, with the having a food, having a restaurant for five years, mm -hmm. where did the idea come to have coffee? To have coffee, yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, one day we're just working along, you know, at the restaurant and... Um, a lady comes in and little did I know she'd been coming in a lot mm -hmm. and uh, she finally you know came over and spoke to me and she was like you know I'm interested you know to know like if the owners of this place she didn't know I wasn't one of the owners yeah. but she says I'm interested to know if one of you, the owners would be interested in opening up a coffee shop um, and I was like hmm I don't know. know nothing about that. Yeah. I don't know. And so I said, well, I can definitely, you know, yeah. tell them about it, you know, and, and see if that's something that they might want to do or whatever. But obviously, we didn't know anything about yeah. restaurants. So clearly, we know nothing about coffee. Um, you know, besides, my dad wakes up every morning, gets his black coffee, and that's yeah. it, you know. But uh, yeah, so she... Uh, you know, sends me all the information and everything. And I tell my parents and they were like, man, I don't know about this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is already a struggle. You know, with restaurant, you have the overhead and mm -hmm. it's just a lot. And so um, we ended up just going over to look at the area mm -hmm. and we were like, man, this area is really cool. Yeah. You know, you're right by OU Medical Center two minutes away from downtown, mm -hmm. you know, which is great because people, I think people like the idea of like downtown. Yeah. Oh, it's downtown. I can be, you know, go to all these different places because yeah. it's so close, but they, never they go. hate, yeah. they hate like, oh man, parking's terrible. Right. Oh man, you got to pay to do every little thing you want to do down there. Yeah. So the idea of it is great. Right. But, um, yeah. So we were like, man, to be so close to downtown, that's awesome. And then, you know, just knowing and learning about the history of, you know, that that area, it's it sits in between um, 8th Street and 4th Street. Mm -hmm. And 4th Street is kind of like if you take 4th Street down like to downtown, you'll hit Deep Deuce area mm -hmm. pretty much. Yeah. So that whole little circle is um, ingrained with a lot of like African-American history and um you know, a lot of people don't know about it. Yeah. So, um, you know, we figured, man, this could really be something, mm -hmm. you know, you know, like we could be like some trailblazers here. Right. Yeah. And so, um, we ended up, you know, getting back and we were like, you know what, I think, I think this is something we want to do. Yeah. Um, but side note, um, because of our poetry lounge, you know, three, four years ago, I had a friend that actually is an avid coffee drinker. Yeah. So, you know, I, I talked to him about it and he was like, yo, I'd love to, you know, be a part and, you know, show you guys around, take you to some shops, you know? Right. So we kind of went to a couple of shops and his favorite shop to go to was Clarity. Okay. Um, yeah. Downtown. Yeah. Yeah. yeah downtown. Uh -huh. So is it Steve, and yeah, Steve, Jen, maybe I think. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 And so when we went there, um, you know, the vibe was awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they didn't know who we were or anything, yeah. but they were gracious enough to set up a whole like tasting for us. Really? Yeah. You know, That's and they awesome. were kind of talking through some of the coffees. Um, and you know, Steve was like, whatever you guys need, I can help you with it. Yeah. And at the time he was still, uh, I think part owner of killer coffee sure. too. So mm -hmm. he was like, you know, we can set you up with coffee. We can get you the equipment. We can, you know. Yeah. help you with the build out as far as layout and stuff. So he was a uh, really, you know, it's kind of like a godsend. Right. So. And effectively, that's some of you, that's competition for you, right? You know, like I kind of would bit. have been like opening up a coffee shop. Like he could have seen you as competition. I thought, no, yeah. uh, I'm not going to help you guys. Yeah. Like you're on your own. And what's crazy, yeah. like in the restaurant business, that's all you have is like a lot of competition. And it's yeah. like anytime you see somebody pop up, it's like, Oh man, they're going to be stealing, stealing some of my customers. But yeah. what I've learned in the coffee world, totally different. Totally different. It's almost That's really like good to hear. it's almost like people want you. Okay. There, they they are like the more the more coffee places, the better. Yeah. You know, and I think that you know 
being a black owned coffee shop is something that Oklahoma, I don't think has ever seen before. Oklahoma city yeah. has never seen before. So, um, it definitely is like a challenge for us. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think it's something that, you know, everybody is like, man, I'm so glad yeah. that, you know, there's something different. Right. You know? Yeah. Is there like, to that point, like being a black owned coffee shop, is there like a stigma around coffee that's like for that? Did you have to overcome anything like that? Because I'm, I'm thinking like all the coffee shops I'm thinking of, I'm like, I mean, the ones that are downtown, but like it's... I don't know. Is there was there a difference? Like, why isn't there black owned coffee shops? I mean, is is it not something that that you guys like think about coffee? I I, I don't know. I mean, I I'm the same as you, right? I do. Not, I'm not a coffee not person a coffee at person. all. I like <laughs> press the coffee machine maker right, and add a bit of yeah, <laughs> add a bit of milk, and that's it. Right? This yeah. is about as far as I go. Yeah. But I have friends who are like super into their coffee and yeah. make you know they spend like seven hundred dollars on a machine in their house, and I'm like, N -n -n why would you do that? You yeah. Know? Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would, you know, curious to know why there hasn't been one already. And then, I mean, for you, obviously, it seemed like the right thing to do in time. But yeah. um, I'm coming from a non-coffee background, too. Um, I think that a lot of, um, I would say that, like, the African-American culture, we drink coffee. Mm -hmm. But specialty coffee is something different. And I think that going to a coffee shop, um, and there's all these different things that you can order. It's like overwhelming. Yeah. So, cause I mean, when I first went to Clarity, I was like, uh, yeah, you're going to have to order something right. cause I have no idea, yeah. you know, and it gets overwhelming cause you, you right. see, you see like movies and stuff and you see the coffee snobs and it's like, they know exactly what they want. If you get it wrong, it's like double pump this, the shot of whatever. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, it's, it's complicated. So yeah. I think that, you know, the that the whole like being scared because you don't know yeah is a huge thing um but i also think that because you if you don't have representation of it it kind of mm. feels like that's not for me okay you know yeah that makes sense yeah now i'm thinking of it when you think of coffee shop and co coffee shops and specialty or like you know not to say any names of people places in town but everyone knows like the premier coffee shops in town and where they go and you see the people that go to that it is very hipster white like yeah yeah you know and then to a point like starbucks was like that too and it probably is like there's plenty of you know mums or whatever that go to starbucks after dropping their kids off and they order I mean, you know, I'm like, I'll take a latte and yeah, let's yeah. add some caramel syrup, syrup, maybe. Like, that's about as far as I go. But there are, you know, it's it, coffee is, uh, I've kind of heard people do this, say this too, is it, it kind of related to like the wine community, right? Where yeah. like, if you don't know anything about wine, everyone kind of looks down on you. Yeah. And like, coffee's kind of gone like the same way, right? Because yeah. I don't, I'm, I'm not a coffee person <laughs> and I'm sure there are people listening to this at the same way. Yeah. You know, being from the UK, I grew up drinking tea, you yeah. know, right? And that's, that's about as far as it goes. I didn't drink coffee until I came out here. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm sure it was super interesting to get into that, right? And then dive in and have and learn and, and all this stuff that's going on and through a friend who likes coffee and that would have been a great help too. Yeah. Um, I could say also, you know, like, as far as not being, not seeing other, you know, black owned coffee shops, I think that, you know, we don't know how expensive that is, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. the startup of coffee is, is super expensive, especially, you know, um, you know, equipment, things that you need, your espresso machine alone is like 16 grand. Jeez, that's a, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I mean, I didn't know that. That's crazy. So it's like, oh my gosh, I'm yeah. going to spend this much money for one piece of equipment. That's why coffee costs six bucks. <laughs> right? right. And that's yeah. another thing that yeah. as far as like, you know, talking about, you know, why, um, you know, African-American people might not go to um, coffee shops, it's because the price of mm -hmm. buying a cup of coffee. Yeah. And, you know, something that I had to learn was, you know, how many times, you know, a bag of coffee gets, you know, how it's sourced mm -hmm. and what it takes to get here. And then what it takes for us to make it, Yeah. you know, it's not cheap. Right. So, and then, you know, when you go to Starbucks, yeah, you might can get, you know, the huge sizes or mm -hmm. whatever. But what I've learned is that, um, local coffee shops really care, mm -hmm. um, you know, down to who's, 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 uh, how could you say that? Like the farmers who yeah, are taking it, like yeah, there's no the middleman. It's like try and get it straight from the source to help them out. So they get much of it. Right. Yeah. Cause it's a, 
it's pretty rough, you know. Yeah. People are out there literally, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah. And we look at it like, oh, man, I, I had no idea that that was happening. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, they, like, typical, like, I mean, and it's, I, it, obviously, it's it's in coffee a lot, but it is in other industries as well if you're a farmer. But you're right. Like, it's, there's so many, like, middlemen taking their cut and then yeah. marking up. or But the money that, like, you have paid for the coffee, the farmer isn't seeing nowhere near that amount, you know. And it's, it's sad sometimes, right? Because they kind of bigger companies come in and they just yeah. kind of, wave their big wand around and hey we're a big company we're gonna you know and kind of push people around but thankfully there are other middlemen companies out there that are for the farmers right kind of sure the conversations i've had with a friend of mine who owns a coffee shop he you know he went with that company and was like yeah we're gonna go and meet the people and do Mm -hmm. it which is so cool to go to guatemala or yeah that's so cool yeah hopefully like one day we can you know we'll get there Mm -hmm. but you know like we use um we go through either killer or prelude um, for our beans and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, they have relationships with whoever yeah. they get it from and, you know. Yeah. So, so when this lady comes to you and thinks about coffee and you start doing research and think, I'm going to go all in. Yeah. What time of year was that? That was before COVID. Like, yeah. Soon, so right? we started this probably like mid 2018. Okay. So, um, yeah, we were, you know, doing the planning of it, you know, trying to come up with names, trying mm-hmm. to do all that you know and the area that we are in was a brand new um place it's on the bottom of an apartment complex so the place had been sitting empty nothing in there yeah so i think what what some people don't know is whenever you go to a place where nothing's in it you have to do the build out yeah so that was the next part so it took us like a a good year to even get that going you know i had a friend because of you know the lounge I had a friend that uh was an architect he went to OU and um he had never done like commercial spaces so uh, I reached out and I was like hey would you be interested in in you know designing this this shot for us and he was like heck yeah I've never done you know a large project like this but I'd love to do it yeah and so um his work was super good um he didn't actually build it, but the design plan sure. um, came up with it. And uh, Gardner Architects actually did the, uh, you know, all of the build, um, out, build out and everything. Or, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, for, so starting, I mean, that's quite a while you've been working towards opening up, you know, opening day. Mm-hmm. Um what were the talks about, you know, the name and how did you go about that? And then obviously the business model, what were you thinking for... Because I think coffee shops around here, every one of them has like their identity, right? You've sure. got to have that sure. to, you know, like in a brand and, and just whatever it is that, you know, you are going to center around. Mm-hmm. What were the talks like when you were thinking of that? Yeah, name wise, that was hard because mm-hmm. um, we didn't know what we were. I mean, it went from, you know, we look up coffee names. Oh, perk. That's a word, yeah. you know, uh, jitters. That's a word, uh, you know we think of all these things and it was like, I don't, I don't know if this connects. And so, um, I don't know one day in, in conversation, um, I don't know if I said it or or who said it, but somehow somebody said, Oh, we could just do it for the culture. And I was like, uh, at the time that was like a saying that everybody was saying, Oh, do it for the culture, do it for the culture. And I was like, buzzword at first I was like, man, this is so cliche. I'm not for it. I do not yeah. think this, this is going to work. And so I think, um, you know, as you're coming up with names, you always try to like keep saying it so you get used to it. So, um, you know, we just kept saying, ah, culture coffee, yeah. culture coffee. And then I kept thinking, I was like, well, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, about culture of people. Right. It could be, you, we could be saying, you know, that coffee had this own culture, you know, yeah. with kind of like what we're talking about with, you know, how the farm process and how, right. you know, and so I was like, yeah, maybe, maybe we can do that. Maybe let's go with culture coffee. So we kind of landed on that name and, um, you know, just conversations about what it would look like. Mm-hmm. I had no idea. Yeah. I mean, the first day of doing like our soft launch, I was scared as I'll know what, you know, cause I was like, yeah, you know, I, obviously because I don't drink coffee, I don't actually make 
um, coffees, you know, like right. lattes. Now I can do, you know, I can make you a drip coffee because right. you're just pushing a button. Same. But, yeah. you know, the craft coffee with espresso drinks and lattes and things like that, um, you know, we had to find some a team of people. Yeah. And Killer, you know, really gave us a great um, barista. She's also a black barista. Her name's mm-hmm. Talitha. Um, she was amazing. Yeah. She uh, really helped formulate our team. Um, of people that we have now currently. And um, she really, like, helped train us and, like, teach us, you know, how we can make this work. And she right. was like, you guys can do it. It's not, you know. All yeah. the people that I have on staff with me have currently worked at other okay. shops. So they knew coffee, but it was kind of like, right. this is different. So, you know, how do we make this work? And so one day um, one of our employees says, hey, have you ever got, have you ever heard of, like, cereal milk lattes? And I was like, yeah, I've heard of that. I've never yeah. had it. Is it good? You know? And he was like, it's really good. I think we should try it. So this is kind of COVID's in, happening, right? Sure. Yeah. So you, this yeah, is yeah, like, you've launched at this point. Yeah, right? we've launched. Yeah. We've launched at this point. And yeah. so we did the first two months. Um, March rolls around. We had to close down. And um, we come back in June. And I just, we just hired another guy to come on. And so, um, so he's mentioning, you know, the, the, the cereal milk. And so, um, you know, one day I was like, all right, I'm going to get a box of cereal and we'll try it. So yeah. we tried, a, I think it was Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I was like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> this is so good. It is, and at the yeah. time, I didn't know, like, how many shops in Oklahoma City were doing cereal milk lattes. Mm-hmm. But I think that uh, Leaf and Bean may have been, like, one of the sure. other shops that were doing it. But... I think we kind of took it and ran with it yeah. <laughs> because it like kind of blew up and like we had people come in, you know, from everywhere trying to get these cereal milk lattes.